Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Haile Mariam Desalen. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for granting us this interview. My pleasure. You've been Prime Minister since last September after your predecessor, Meles Zenawi, died of illness after 21 years uh, in power. Uh, you're also, since January, the chairperson of uh, the African Union. And we're going to begin with this because obviously you have a lot on your plate. Uh, first of all, there's the 50th anniversary of the African Union to be celebrated in your capital, Addis Abeba, in May. But obviously there are several issues that you have to deal with. The first one is the war in Mali. The French have been there. There's supposed to be a transition uh, towards a UN-led African force, but uh, many people believe, including the Americans, that the African armies are not ready for this. What's your take? Uh, I think Africa is ready. Uh, Africa has experience in solving African problems, but that doesn't mean that the international community should not, shouldn't help Africa. Of course, up to, they are up to the task. The problem is uh, that the, 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 the funding and the resources are not at the disposal of the African forces. And of course, the African regional organizations are trying their best, but the international community has to support. Uh, what about French troops staying there indefinitely? Is this a good thing, or do you think there should be a clear end to the French military presence in Mali? I think Fran France has taken a, a correct measure by withdrawing some of the forces while the international community taking over the responsibility. It shouldn't be the responsibility of only France. It should be also the responsibility of all the international community in peace uh, enforcement and peacekeeping in, But in Mali. And I feel that uh, the first intervention of France was correct, and it should be like that, because otherwise, you know, you could have seen catastrophe that can happen in Mali. Uh, but since France has already secured the Malian uh, population now, but the international community should engage immediately uh, to support uh, France. It's not only France's responsibility. What about the political agenda in Mali? Elections should be held in July. Many people think it's too early because the country is not secured. It's impossible to organize transparent elections. What's your take? Do you think we should wait? I think the most important thing is security alone is not a solution. Political dialogue, reconciliation process has to continue. As you know, uh, the political uh, dialogue and the Re reconciliation commission has been established. That commission has to work and engage uh, all the stakeholders in the Malian aspect in a genuine way so that uh, the real problem, the root cause of the problem should be understand, understood and should be addressed properly. In this regard, election is a final result of the reconciliation process and uh, to establish a credible government in Mali. And through this process of reconciliation, I think the timing can be understood. I see that if the reconciliation process goes uh, quickly and expeditiously, uh, the, the July timeline can work. But if not, it should be postponed. Depending on the evaluation that is taking place, uh, whether the ma there is a maturity of uh, uh, reconciliation process that has taken, I think uh, it depends on, on the process itself. I, I want to get uh, closer uh, to uh, your uh, home country uh, in Kenya. Recently, uh, head of state was elected, Uhuru Kenyatta. However, he's wanted by the International Criminal Court. What should be done? I think it is the decision of the Kenyan people uh, to elect their own president. And they have already uh, elected a vibrant and very strong man. Uh, I mean, a uh, very intelligent man for the Kenyan uh, you know, leadership. And I believe that uh, through his leadership, there will be a change, a reform, and dynamism in Kenya. But what if he's wanted by the ICC for very I, serious crimes? ICC has to see to it. Uh, whether it is crime or not has not been decided because it is on the judicial process now. Nobody can say until and otherwise uh, the decision is taken by the court that a, a person is, has committed a crime. Uh, he can be a suspect, but he cannot be considered as a criminal. Should he stand moment. trial? Uh, I feel that um, uh, he can stand for trial, but since the decision of the Kenyan people has already been made, 
and this shows that there is a reconciliation process that is taking place in Kenya. So this process helps, you know, what helps for Kenya and for the leadership in Kenya is that uh, since uh, recently you know that uh, some of the members has been set free uh, in the process of the ICC. Similarly, I hope uh, the, the, this process also will set free uh, Uhuru and as well as uh, the Vice President uh, uh, Ruto. Uh, even closer to home, maybe Somalia. Obviously, Ethiopian troops have gone into uh, Somalia for the second time in four years. It's still a very chaotic situation in that country. There have been recent bombings over there. Uh, but, uh, you know, you have to see the, comprehensively the whole situation. In Somalia, now we see that there is a hope at the, uh, in, in Somalia for a credible government as well as uh, peace and uh, tranquility in Somalia. Al-Shabaab has become weak and defeated in many ways. Uh, but hit and run kind of terrorism action takes place everywhere. If you take uh, terrorists also do the same thing in Boston, in, in the United States recently. That doesn't mean that the uh, United States is a chaotic country. So terrorism can happen here and there. In your country but, as well? Uh, There's been a recent reports of a plot against UN staff in Ethiopia. Uh, but that hasn't been materialized. Uh, well, luckily, we were able to, uh, to handle this issue carefully. But the whole issue is, in Somalia, the, the process of uh, you know, uh, re-establishing re uh, a failed state into a credible state in Somalia has continued vigorously. And I think if the international community still comes together and supports the Somali government, we see that there is hope and light at the end of the tunnel in Somalia. And uh, there is also hope. Life is beginning in Somalia now. And therefore, that has to be uh, you know, expedited and strengthened. Uh, another problem in the region concerning you is Eritrea. There was a war back in 2000, and a border dispute hasn't been settled. There have been tensions. Is there any hope of a breakthrough with Eritrea? Uh, if you take, uh, for example, <clears throat> many African countries, 80% uh, of African borders has not been demarcated. So if you take the whole Africa, that doesn't mean that uh, Africans are fighting with each other. But you've been to war with Eritrea. Yes, it's not. The, the problem is not with uh, the border issue. It is the mentality and the attitude of the leadership in Eritrea that has, uh, you know, uh, 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 aggress aggression has been made on Ethiopia. But the whole thing is <clears throat> not going back to the war situation. We have already put in place the last eight years a peace deal, a peace point, and a strategy where we want to make a dialogue and uh, resolve the, our problems peacefully and also um, na normalize our relationship with Eritrea. So Ethiopia is ready to make a dialogue to normalize our relationship with Eritrea. It's only the ball is in the court of the Eritrean region. They're not responding. They are not responding, but we, we expect them to respond uh, favorably. favorably. Yes, in the near future. Yes. Coming to your country, uh, there's been uh, a lot of uh, criticism about the human rights uh, situation, that the opposition is being oppressed, that the media uh, is also being oppressed. There have been uh, several uh, cases of people who've been thrown in jail uh, because of uh, anti-terrorist laws that many human rights groups deem too severe, too harsh. Uh, UNESCO just awarded the world press freedom to a journalist from Ethiopia who's in jail, Riyad Alemu. What is your reaction uh, to this criticism? Is uh, there some real problems with freedom of the press and freedom of the opposition in your country? Uh, for us, uh, our due process of law is, uh, you know, according to the international standard and the practice, and we will continue on this way, whether whoever says it, what matters is the peace and security and democracy in the country rather than what somebody says. The whole important thing in this issue is that rule of law is one of the pillars of democratic process in the country. So we have responsibility also not only uh, to have you know, uh, any kind of issues in the country, but to secure our people from any kind of terrorist actions. But you and agree there is? Regard, I think uh, what's important is we are following all the international standard, including 
the UN Charter for Human Rights and Democracy, which we have signed and ratified in my country. So I think it is according to the international universal uh, declarations that we are operating in the country. But you think there's room for improvement? Do you agree that things could be better in this regard, that there should be a more vibrant press, a more vibrant opposition to make Ethiopia a real and full democracy? I think there is no doubt about it. Not only in Ethiopia, even in much more civilized democratic nations like France, you have always something to improve. So how can we say that there is no need of improvement in a fledgling democracy and a democracy of only 15 years of age? You know, you can, you can go back to France, the process of democratization in France. It has taken more than maybe 100 years or so. So we cannot be compared with, uh, you know, civilized democracies like France, while democracy has started in Ethiopia only 15 years. Democracy by itself is a process. Democracy is building a culture of democracy in nations. Therefore, we have a fledgling democracy. We have to learn lots of things. There are a number of rooms for improvement, including you know, the, the press, media, and all kinds of things. We are learning from the international practices. And my government is open to learn and improve things at home. That doesn't mean but, uh, that we will we'll let uh, you know, terrorist actions to take place in the country. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister, for answering our questions. And thank you very much for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.